Hello rogues and welcome back to Rogue Hobbies, where today I have some very exciting news. I have decided to make my own miniature range from scratch. Now that sounds like it's a big deal, and to me it is a big deal, and I don't really know how to do this whole like reveal thing, and I've rewritten this intro like 50 times, so I guess I'm just gonna do it, and I'm going to introduce you to the goblins of Rascal Town. Whoa, 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 hang on, hang on. Wait, mm. wait a minute. Because we've kind of skipped a few stages there and I'm not gonna let you just skip to the cool end part that easily. We need to go way, way back before we get to the end bit because this was a long process to get to what you just saw there. In this video, I am going to show you every single step in a process from conceptualizing your miniature in a sketch to doing professional looking photography for packaging and how to put the whole thing together to make a fully fledged product so that maybe you can start your own miniature journey yourself. And honestly, I could not be more excited to share this video with you guys finally, so let's go. <laughs> Swipe. Okay, so like I said, I'm super excited to just cut to the good bit and show you all my painting and my miniatures and the packaging. But before we get to that stage, we need to go back and cover a few things first. In this video, I'm essentially going to be adopting a bunch of different jobs and roles in order to make this miniature range come to life. When I worked at Games Workshop, I was pretty hands-on with the whole process of packaging for miniatures. I was a graphic designer in the specialist design studio, which meant that whenever a new miniature got finished, I would make a box for the product, photograph the finished painted miniatures for the box, pop in some artwork, make a construction booklet for the miniatures inside, and then send the whole thing away to print. And honestly, I love that job very much and I kind of miss it, but just don't tell them that. So now in order to do the entire process myself, I'm gonna have to adopt a few more jobs on top of the ones I was already used to, like being a miniature designer and a concept artist. So I guess we're gonna start there. There we go. Now I'm an artist. Okay. Okay. <laughs> sorry mother, sorry father. I'm an artist now. There's hair in my face. Ah. My first job is to be a concept artist and work out what I want my future miniatures to look like. And funnily enough, this step, therefore I guess this entire project kind of happened by accident. Sometimes when I'm bored, I like to draw goblins and about a year ago, I doodled up this little guy on my tablet just for a little bit of fun and to brush off some cobwebs because I don't draw nearly as much as I should. He's a little fishing goblin and he's got a big fluffy chest and he's got an angry little frog that he's just caught on his little fishing line and I don't know, I think he's kind of cool and cute, I don't know. <laughs> and I never intended this little sketch, which I did for fun, to be the start of my own miniature range, but I guess the last year has been full of surprises, so here we are. When I started Rogue Hobbies, I discovered many things like happiness and a sense of self-worth, but I also discovered that one of my friends, who is a very talented sculptor, was willing to bring my little vision into life in 3D, so I thought, uh, why not? This is Tom. And as well as being an all-round cool guy, he is also an exceptionally talented sculptor. And within a few days of me giving him my little goblin sketch, he had managed to turn it into a fully fledged miniature. Very talented annoyingly so. Now, I've sculpted a few things before out of green stuff, and whilst they have a certain charm, I'm really glad that this part of the project fell into the hands of someone who was a little bit more professional. Not only is the end product now way more refined and looks much better than anything I could probably ever do, but the fact that it's a 3D printable file or an STL means that anyone in the world with a printer can print out one of my goblins, and I find that extremely cool. So, once I'd approved the design, we fired up the resin printers and we did the whole printer go burr magic. I fished out my ex 
extremely normal surgical gloves and I got to work bringing to life my very first miniature. And I don't know about Tom, but for me seeing something that I had drawn produced in 3D as a real object thing for the first time, which I could hold, was an incredibly cool moment. I imagine it's pretty similar to being a mum and holding your baby for the first time and looking at that baby. Maybe not though, probably is though. <laughs> And with that, we had produced my very first miniature and it was time for me to take over again and become a professional miniature painter. Wait. Subtle. Nice. <laughs> Hi, I'm Louise and I'm a miniature painter, but you probably already knew that because I have a paintbrush behind my ear. Not only do I think this stage is one of the coolest and most fun stages, but it's also probably one of the most important and vital stages in the whole miniature packaging design process. The paint job on the miniature kind of becomes the main way the miniature is advertised online and on boxes and in shops and all of that important stuff. So if the miniature is painted badly or doesn't show off the miniature well enough, off, then it's gonna look ugly and no one's gonna want to buy it. So this stage in the process is extremely time-consuming, skill-orientated, and pretty much vital for the entire project to work, which is why I think the Evy Metal team deserve fat paychecks and long, all-inclusive package holiday deals. You've probably noticed by now that my miniature is slightly bigger than your average 28mm heroic scale miniature, and we decided to do that for a few reasons. We want these miniatures to just be really good for fun to paint, and I think that the larger scale of the miniature definitely made things much easier to paint. For example, the eyes were super duper easy, and you can get loads of detail on them without having to worry about your hand shaking one little millimeter and messing the whole thing up. All of the details are large and easy to get to and paint and highlight, and I think that this is really good not only for adults, but also for kids who want to learn how to paint too, without them feeling bad that they can't quite paint an impossibly small gem or an eyeball. And maybe my favorite part of this whole miniature is that when he's finished, he really stands out. But yeah, paint Painting up this miniature was a real treat and I had a really good time doing it and I don't know if I'm being biased because of course I'd like painting a miniature that I drew because I drew it so of course I'd like painting it but when it was finished I really do think that it might be one of the best miniature paint jobs I've ever done which is pretty wild. Oh yeah and if you're interested in how I painted up this miniature then I'm gonna be posting a tutorial which will cover his skin and his teeth and his eyes and his fur and his ears and his nose over on the Rogue hobbies Patreon. I really appreciate everyone who supports my Patreon because it means I get to keep making videos like this. So if you already support it then thank you so much and if you're interested in watching some tutorials and miniature painting like this one here then please check it out and consider joining. But for now back to the video. So with the miniature painted and complete it's time for me to hand in my notice and switch jobs to become a miniature photographer. Not like a miniature photographer like a full scale one but I photograph. You get it. Hi, I'm Louise and I'm a professional miniature photographer. Click. When I worked in miniature packaging, this was definitely one of my favorite parts of the job. It's so fun and satisfying to do. And recently on Twitter, I kind of floated the idea of maybe doing a video where I cover some of the techniques I used to get really good, high quality and professional looking pictures for the use of box art and miniatures. And I wanted that tutorial to be like part of this video, but as I was writing up the script, I realized that if I was to include the full photography tutorial in this video, it would make this video like three times as long as it should be. So I'm excited to say that the very next video on this channel is going to be that full how to photograph miniatures for box art tutorial and I'll go through every single stage from photographing your miniatures to how I prepare the photographs for box art. With all that said I'm still going to be talking you through how I did the bare bones of this stage but if you want a bit more detail on how I do my miniature photography then please tune in in a week or two weeks or soon when I'll be posting the full video on this channel. I start by setting up my light box and my camera with a few extra smaller lights so I can illuminate the miniature from every angle and show off as much of the detail as possible. Then once my miniature is posed and well lit, I use a method called photo stacking in which I will take multiple pictures of the miniature with each picture having a different plane of the miniature in focus. And then I use Photoshop to stitch all those images together to give me one fully focused, highly detailed image. 
After my image is nicely put together, I quickly give it a little spruce in Adobe Lightroom by making it a little bit brighter and sharper. Then I take it back into Photoshop and use the pen tool to carefully clip the miniature itself out from the background. Et voila, my job as a miniature photographer is complete. So I'm gonna retire to the Bahamas with my beautiful wife and kids and hand over all my work to the graphic designers in the packaging team so that they can continue the project. Hi, I'm a graphic designer for the packaging team and my job is to make the box for this little guy. Graphic designers aren't actually like that. They're really nice people. I'm just, I'm being mean. Hello, I'm the graphic designer over on the packaging team and my job is to make the box for this little guy. Now, this stage in the process is pretty much branding if you're doing it from scratch. But fortunately for me, when I set up Rogue Hobbies, I created a bunch of assets like backgrounds and logos and fonts. And that means I can potentially use those in this project. The first thing I'm gonna need to design this box is a cutter guide, which I have here. And this is gonna act as the blueprint for my box. And cutter guides are pretty much essential to make a box, but making them is not my favorite job in the world because it requires a lot of measuring and stuff and numbers are hard. After I had my cutter guide all put down, it was a case of deciding what I wanted the box to look like. I knew I wanted the box to be whimsical and goblin-y and fortunately for me, I already had the perfect grassy moss texture and a bunch of little fun mushrooms prepared from all all my other branding, which was just perfect for the background of this box and suited the little fishing goblin super well. The first thing I tend to do is design the front of the box, which is usually the most important part of the box because it's the side that you see when you're buying it. So it's gonna have my brand name, Rogue Hobbies, and a big picture of the miniature, which we just photographed in the previous step. I added a little Rogue Trader-esque naming convention, RH001, for my first ever miniature. And I think that's quite cute until I pronounced it in my head, like Scooby-Doo, like Ruh-O. Ruh and then I ruined it, but I don't know, I'm still gonna keep it because I like it. <laughs> now, usually all the boxes that I designed in the Specialist Design Studio were very flat because all they held were sprues, but this one holds an entire miniature and has all these large square panels around the side, which means I have way more freedom to decide what I wanna put on the box. I decided to try and integrate the original artwork and a little story about the goblin on the side of the box. And then I included for the first ever time the term Rascal Town, and this may become become the world that I build my miniatures around in the future, and it's kind of exciting to have it written down here for the first time. For the back of the box, I decided to just go with the usual formula, which is some nice zoomed in detailed shots of the miniature, a little color guide, and some health, safety, and legal information about the miniature inside. And once I had designed what I wanted the box to look like roughly, I printed it out for my first test mock-up. Physically printed mock-ups aren't necessary, but I find them super, super useful, at least for me, because it's pretty hard to visualize something 3D when you're designing it flat. So I usually like to print it out even if it's at a slightly smaller scale so that I can build it and work out how everything lines up in real life. And overall, I really like the way that this box was looking. All of that bright, saturated, mossy texture and the mushrooms mixed in with the papery panels really draws the eye to the text and the miniature, which is just what I want. I did, however, want to make a couple of changes, as is always the way when you're designing these things. A few bits and pieces didn't quite line up or look right, and the alignment of the logos and the framing of the mushrooms was just a little bit off. Also, I designed the box so that it feels like it's opening from the back, and that felt all wrong and I hate it and had a really bad hand feel, so that's gonna have to go. I went back to the drawing board for round two and got very, very confused trying to reorientate the whole box, but I got there eventually. At this stage, I also decided to add in a little construction booklet and a thank you card, and I decided to make the whole box double-sided because we're not about wasting paper here at Rogue Hobbies. We, we freaking love the planet love this planet. For some reason, I used to really like making construction booklets, so the fact that this one was so simple was kind of disappointing, but it's also sort of hilarious and I love it anyways. We sent the final box design off to the printers and when we got it back and it was all assembled, I had another little cry as my product became a reality. Wow, I'm a big baby, I know, but I don't know, it's just, it's just super cool, right? Like, it's another, like, thing that I've done that's become real 
And I don't know, I was just so excited. Then it was just a case of putting everything together and making it look like a product which could be sent to a customer. We figured out a way to package up this little bad boy for posting so it's nice and snug and safe whilst also keeping it within the mossy theme by using these little pieces of paper which look like grass. And when you pack it all up, it looks like the goblin is taking a little nap on his grassy little hill and then the grassy little hill takes a nap on top of the goblin and then you put in the little thank you card and the assembly guide and he's ready to go. With all that hard work put into the product design and the miniature now safe and secure in his little box, I now have a finished miniature product, which is kind of crazy. But yes, now we can roll the beauty shots and the product photography. Let's go. <laughs> So you've probably guessed this by now, but this whole project was sort of an excuse for me to redo some jobs that I absolutely love doing and just kind of shake a couple of creative cobwebs off and put something together that I genuinely love. I'm gonna probably make and send out just a few of these boxes to some people who mean a lot to me and who have inspired me or helped me out during my long time as a hobbyist and my short time as a YouTuber. However, just between you and me, if you do like what you've seen today, make sure you leave a comment and let me know. Because if there's enough interest, who knows, maybe we can work something out in the future. I do, however, have some very good news for you if you're interested in getting your hands on this goblin right now. The STLs or the printable files for this miniature will be available on my Patreon right after this video goes up. And if you subscribe to that tier, you won't just get access to the fishing goblin because we also have some other little guys and some bigger guys who are waiting to populate Rascal Town. As usual, thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed the video and thank you for being rogues. I'll see you in the next one. Bye! Bye bye! <laughs>